So I need to go learn the information first. Right. And then I need to share it. Mm -hmm. Third, I got to hope that people trust me enough to go do it. Right. And that third step is a hard one where we know a lot of stuff now. We just aren't executing a plan, whatever that plan may be. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Money Talk. I am Teresa, and today we have Mr. Jasper Smith with us. He is an expert in finances, and we will be discussing generational wealth today, along with many other things. So I recommend that you stay for this entire video. And if you enjoy our content, please like, subscribe, and share. So hi, Mr. Jasper. Can you introduce yourself to the audience today? Yeah, of course. Thank you so much first for having me on The Money Talk, Teresa. I love... I'm a self-proclaimed finance nerd. Like I love talking about money and it literally was my curiosity is what drove me into this career path of like being a financial planner, advisor, coach. It was just this curiosity when I, I'll say probably when I got out of college and got that first job and Mm -hmm. I just realized there was so much more I wish I would have known at 21. Right. So I, I started having questions. I started questioning my family, you know, my parents, my uncles, my aunties. Like I was just, I had questions. Right. I was like, why don't we talk about money more often? Well, Jasper, yeah. what do you look? Well, Jasper, it's taboo. You know, we don't ask people these questions. I said, oh, so this is why we struggling. Cause we're not talking about the one thing that could maybe help us get out the struggle. Right. And, and so it was that curiosity that led me into this career field or this industry. Mm-hmm. And so I, I got licensed. Um, I'm insurance licensed, investment licensed or securities licensed. Mm-hmm. I was like, I just need to know what's going on with the money like right. for my own sake. And, and then as I kind of went through my career, I was just kind of noticing the office space that I was in. Oh, I was the only one. It was like one or two of us. I'm like, huh. So my right. people don't, we don't talk about money. Mm-mm. We don't have a good relationship with money. And I just started going down this list of questioning. I was like, okay, I see the issue. There aren't enough people who look like me in this business, in this industry. So mm-hmm. now I'm starting to understand when I read the data and these research papers around wealth in this country, why mm-hmm. Blacks or African Americans are always at the bottom of areas or categories where we shouldn't want to be. And then mm-hmm. we're at the top. Again, areas we wouldn't, we shouldn't be at the top. We're at the top of those. I'm like, ah, we don't have anybody who looks like us disseminating this information in a manner that we can understand it. I, I have That has been my lifelong obsession once I got into the space and saw that I understand my people because I come from that. But I know you got to talk to us a certain way and Mm -hmm. we can't assume we can't be judging these books by the cover because that's what the that's what these a lot of these firms and companies have done over the years is Mm -hmm. they almost made like you knew maybe you did or didn't know you were uh, in an underserved community, but they make it known when you walk into that office and they're like, oh, I can't you don't have this amount of money. I can't talk to you. So how do you expect how do you expect me to get there? I, I I don't have that money, but now I'm on my own. And this is, think about, this is before YouTube. This is before all this technology has enabled us to really do a deeper dive into all things finance. I mean, you literally have to hope and pray and wish that somebody in your family introduced you to a, an advisor, an insurance agent, a tax account. You, you had to hope you, you were right. going to meet these people within your life or in your community or your social groups. But again, because we we still don't want to talk about it, we tend to shy away from it. And so I, I just again, I'm I'm aware of all of this in my early mm-hmm. 20s. I'm like, oh, here's mm-hmm. here, 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 here are the issues. But what solutions can I bring? So I need to go learn the information first. Right. And then I need to share it. Mm-hmm. Third, I got to hope that people trust me enough That's to right. go do it. Right. Now, that third step is a hard one where. We know a lot of stuff now. We just aren't executing a plan, whatever that plan may look like. Mm-hmm. That, in a nutshell, has been my career, figuring out how can I help people have a better relationship with money? How can I potentially educate them to change the way they think about money, how they feel about it? You know, mm-hmm. how do they engage with their, their family? So a, a, a spouse, you know, you and your spouse, are y'all talking money? Are you talking to your kids about money? You know, how are you bringing up the kids as, you know, whatever relationship you have with money, your kids are watching. So that's going to trickle down. Mm-hmm. So 
So I started putting all these kind of pieces together and I'm still learning a lot. And I've been in the mm-hmm. industry a little over 16 years now, mm-hmm. but I still have so much more to learn about the human mind because it's mm-hmm. definitely more, they're just behaviors. There's the, the trauma, the anxiety. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I got a lot of work to do. And I'm just one of the many, you know, financial experts that's out here trying to figure out how can we help people get to that goal? How can we help them to cross that bridge? You know, and it, it doesn't matter where you are. And so I found myself working for large companies or being associated with large financial institutions. And I'm talking banks, investment firms, mm-hmm. insurance companies. And then also I've always kind of kept one foot in the community because I know yeah. those companies aren't coming into the hood. Like if oh. you, I'm just saying, and, and, if, and, and if we, if you there, there's some site. If you just search certain zip codes, mm-hmm. certain zip codes lack those financial institutions on purpose. Look, I, my, I, I, I've enjoyed shopping at a Trader Joe's, but a Trader Joe's ain't showing up in certain neighborhoods. Just like financial institutions, and so I don't, I don't even get upset, and that's what I've had to learn too. That I don't, I don't, I can't go back and change the past, and you know, in history. All mm-hmm. I can do is hopefully think about what is Jasper doing to improve his and his family's situation. Right. If people can internalize that and begin to take the steps, I, I think we can create generational wealth. I think that's possible, mm-hmm. but people aren't really committing to a plan. And so for me, I took kind of the opposite where I, I want to disrupt generational poverty. Right. Your granny and grandpa were struggling. Your parents were struggling. Now you on the struggle bus. Who is going to get off this bus? Please get off the bus. It ain't fun. It ain't exciting. Y'all are stressed. You got high blood Ooh. pressure. You know, we. I mean, all of these, it's it's the uh, the analogy that I give, Teresa, is it's the frog in the boiling pot of water. Have you heard that one? Yes, but you can go ahead because there may be someone who has not heard there it. Is. There is always somebody who's like, I never heard that. So the 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 story goes that if you put a frog in a boiling yeah. a hot pot of boiling, well, it's mm-hmm. a hot a, a pot of hot water, and you slowly turn the temperature up, the right. frog would just sit there and not jump out. So it literally boils to death. Right. And it could have just hopped out. Yeah, it cooked. Mm-hmm. It got cooked. <laughs> and and that analogy is what I think about when I think of underserved communities, black or brown, or however you want to classify it. I think about we have glorified the struggle and we're sitting in this pot and we mm-hmm. can literally just jump out and change our life dramatically for our current situation, future generations. And, and I know it's possible because mm-hmm. I've seen it. I've seen it mm-hmm. in real time where mm-hmm. somebody in a family made a decision to do something different. That's it. And you know, that's one of the reasons why the money talk exists is because we want to help people change their lives, their future, and their children's lives. Because just like you've stated, we are really, our behaviors basically are learned from, in my family, it's learned. My grandparents didn't know. My parents didn't know. They're still on the struggle bus. And we didn't start figuring out until we were in our late 30s. And okay, and it's like, why is that? But it's still like you say, if you don't have someone in your circle, that insurance, insurance agent, that financial advisor or that financial planner, if they're not in your circle, you're not going to know. Well, you know what? They're not in my circle. When I was growing up, that wasn't in my circle. And the only reason why they are now is because we left. I got into books and I started learning. But the reason that we are here today is because we're trying to help people stop this generational poverty. And in order for us to move to generational wealth, we got to cut this and Get off the struggle bus. So what I want us to you know, talk well, about. Said, let me just, say this, Teresa. Yeah, go ahead. What I was going to say, I didn't mean to cut you off, but like, yeah. I think, and this is just my opinion, mine uh-huh. only. I think some of us like the struggle bus. I think we are comfortable. Used to it. On the struggle bus because to, because to be successful in life mm-hmm. in general, you've got mm-hmm. to take some risk and be willing to do something different. And I think it's the unfortunate part is that some of us are too afraid to do something different that could actually improve our lives. That's what scare. That's what scares me. But it's also what fuels me to continue to do the work that I do with the education and speaking on platforms like yours. Is that 
maybe one person listening to this will say, you know what? Today's the last day. I'm, I got to stop this. I have to change. It's never easy, but you got to be willing to do it or else you're going to get the same results as the, your, 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 your elders. And if you like the lifestyle they live in, you keep going, you change nothing. If you don't like it, you've got to start making those changes. Right. And so like for our listeners, most of our listeners are the millennials. So some of them Perfect. may not even understand what generational poverty is. Can you explain that, please? Absolutely. So so really, when you see the word generational and then whatever comes after that, just know that's mm -hmm. multiple generations of the same thing. So in, in my stance with, with my tagline, think of your grandparents didn't have a lot of wealth. Now, your parents have not had a lot of wealth. So mm -hmm. chances are you might not have a lot of wealth. And so that's that's so mom and your grandparents, that's two generations right there. That's a gener there wow. you go. There, there you go. There, there's the mm -hmm. there's the hierarchy of they didn't do it. They didn't do it. <laughs> and now you're not doing it. Right. And, and honestly, Teresa, the, the hardest thing for me when I'm sitting down with people or if I'm doing a group setting, mm -hmm. I always ask the question. Are you satisfied with the results that your family has gotten thus far? Oh, that's a big question. I have, I have, I've made some people upset with that question because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it requires you to look yourself in the mirror first and right. then go ask the people who love and care about you. You know, why, why didn't we talk about saving? Why didn't we have enough life insurance when, you know, these, mm -hmm. these, these crowdfunding campaigns where somebody dies, it's like, just get life oh. insurance. That Life insurance takes care of all of that. You don't need to campaign. You know, well, I can't retire when I want to. Well, that means you didn't save and invest early enough in your career. So right. if you keep seeing these things happen and occurring within your family, like something has got to click that mm -hmm. this this ain't right. Right. There's got to be a better way. And it has to be a better way. And then listening to you talk, something that I want us to discuss, like it ain't really on the dialogue, but I feel in my heart that this is something that me and you can discuss some of the things that like bother me, but I can't do nothing about it is when you see people getting these expensive cars to prove to someone that they got it going on when they can barely make the car payment because they got the car insurance. Can you educate and talk to people to let them understand that it is really not about people looking at you thinking you got it going on when you can't even sleep at night because you can't even figure out how you're going to make the payment the next month? I mean, does that make sense? I don't, maybe I, when I was younger, we were there. We wanted the cars because we thought we wanted people to know, oh, we had it going on. But nowadays in 2024, that's a bad choice. So can you speak to people who want people to look at them and think they got it going on when they really don't? No, you know, Teresa, I'm not a therapist. So I don't know what's going on upstairs. I don't know what, what? I honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm joking, but like, I don't know mm -hmm. where that thought comes in to where, mm -hmm. I'm going to literally struggle to try to prove a point to somebody who cares nothing about like that's that's that is a bigger conversation than just the money aspect of you spending mm -hmm. on a depreciating mm -hmm. asset in a car. Mm -hmm. right. But it's this it's this it's like this validation that this thing validates who I am. And that's right. that's the sad part to me is that nah, if I got my health. I've won the lottery, right? The health, I got, yeah. my brain is good. My body functions, mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. won. Now, anything else is just, is just gravy on top. But for right. those people who are in some of those kind of, I'm trying to think of the, the proper word. They're, these are, God, I can't, I, I want to say, I don't want to use generational, but these are, yeah, you know, maybe these are generational habits that they're accustomed mm -hmm. to seeing play out. Mm -hmm. So the car made you feel cool right. for a minute. And then now you get home and now you're seeing that bill and every month you're like, man, what, what am I really getting for, for having this car? And for a lot of people, there's a disconnect in, in, upstairs of I feel good when I'm out, but then the pain of making this payment and not being able to afford or barely being able to afford hasn't forced me to change. It's like oh. the, um, it, it's, it's scary, but it's like the person, and I know I have some good mentors in my life who've had multiple heart attacks. And wow. I'm like, so you still here for a reason is the first one, mm -hmm. but I don't need to have a heart attack, nor do I want to have a heart attack to improve my health. But right. unfortunately, sometimes that's people's wake up calls where they mm -hmm. need to go do that. And mm -hmm. then I hope that they see there was a better way. So for people with these cars 
And I have a client, I had a client one time, she she was the person you're describing. I said, tell me why you got the car. And it was all, I want to impress somebody. You know, I have a certain title, so I need to look a certain right. way. You know, when mm -hmm. I pull up to church, when I pull up to the function, it was all these, mm -hmm. I get it. You're trying to style on people. It's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But you're not a celebrity and you don't have celebrity money. So until we have a little more money to play with, I'm going to mm -hmm. need you to downsize if you can. For mm -hmm. some, Teresa, some of them are just like, I can't do that. You can sell that wow. car tomorrow. That car can be easily taken back to the A. So who want this car? Right, right. That's true. And so like when I hear you talk about people not being ready for retirement, it's like if someone is just listening to us right now, like I just want to say when you want to save for your retirement and you want to have a better retirement, Sometimes you have to choose. Is it the seven or $800 car payment or is that you invest in your $600 a month so that you can have a retirement with dignity? And so like with you talking about the generational poverty, all of that like ties into it. If you don't manage your money wisely while you're young and you have the capability to make money, when you get the retirement age, you're going to still be on the struggle bus. And we don't want you on the struggle bus. I, I don't. You, you know, what? I, so I did this. This is a real thing. When I was in my 20s, I went around and asked like all my elders, um, advisors that I was working with, just anybody who was like over 60 when I was in my 20s. And I would mm -hmm. say, look, what do I need to do financially now that I got my job and I got like, what do I do financially? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of them. 100% of them said, save as much money as you can, start investing right now, whether you understand the markets or real estate, you got to get into something investment related mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then get all or as much insurance as you can because you are young and healthy. Now, right. those are those three uh -huh. were mentioned every single time. And they said other stuff, but those three, save mm -hmm. as much as you can because of time and compounding. Mm -hmm. Invest because of time and compounding. Mm -hmm. And insurance is because at some point you're going to have something to protect. It's mm -hmm. cheaper to do it when you're younger and mm -hmm. healthier. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because <laughs> the longer you wait, the more it's going to cost. Yeah. And, and, I, and I've had people where they're like, oh, now I have to get it. And then you wow. got to pay that, that pre. Hey, look, you got a little health issue. So what? You got to get the coverage. Mm -hmm. So we got to do what we got to do. And, and it's it's. It's unfortunate that we don't, again, talk more about these things in our households or in our communities, because if we if we did, I think or I don't think I know we would have better statistics when I read these reports uh -huh. that over time, it's still going to take us some time. And, and, and I know these sample sizes aren't the entire country, but mm -hmm. every so often I, I look to see how long the data, like how old is the data? Mm -hmm. But it's still ha the needle has barely moved. And I've been in the industry for 16 years. And I say barely. I mean, we don't yeah. own enough homes. Our retirement accounts aren't great. We still have too much in credit card debt, too much student loans, you know, not enough savings, not enough. I mean, every year I'm like, maybe this is the year I'm going to start seeing an uptick. And I'm like, no, we're still not there. And everybody else just is bypassing us. You got immigrants who don't speak the language who come in. <laughs> And, and magically put, surpass us. Yep. Right. They do. And so, but you know what I have to tell you is like most men, which I, maybe I shouldn't even use that word because I don't want to take nobody off. But based on what I've seen, men of color, sometimes the bell don't go off that I need to do A, B, C, and D. So like you discovered this when you were younger. Can you give a word of advice or wisdom to a young man that they need to get themselves together so that they can be an older themselves. Because you, I don't really know what, you said you saw people, but you wasn't seeing people like you. And then something click in you. But we got so many other people, it could be even a female, that it just not has not clicked with them that I need to do something different. So I, I would say surround yourself with people who you deem to be financially successful. Right. They may not be, I don't think you have to be the perfect, you know, person to give good advice, mm -hmm. but the messenger does matter. I'll say mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you could have lived it and messed it up and you're trying to help other people prevent from doing what you've done. It's like parents with their children. Hey, mom right. did this when I was your age. So don't do this. And the kid mm -hmm. may still do it, but that's on the kid. Right. The, the, the stove is hot. 
Don't touch it. You've trained them, showed them images, showed them burns. And that mm -hmm. kid is like, I don't believe it. Let me die. It's hot. And now they got a burn, right? So now they become a story of like, I told you, but to not do that. And here <laughs> you are. I have told you all these years. But unfortunately, you have some people need to fall and they need to fall hard. And you oh, still yeah. hope that. And you hope, again, you hope that that fall and that trauma and that stress gets them to say, you know what? I got to change. For some, mm -hmm. it does. For the overwhelming majority of people, does it? That's that's the sad part. And so, being with your experience, why do you think it's important for people to have a financial plan? It's important because how are you measuring your success if you don't? Okay. Ha, 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 it's like going on. A, let me give you, let me give you this story. Let me let me explain this way. When most okay. people go on a, when most people go on a vacation, they plan out. I'm gonna get my luggage out the closet. I'm gonna have some clean drawers, some clothes, a toothbrush. <laughs> toiletry items like you go through this whole inventory of we're going mm -hmm. on a trip so let me take inventory now mm -hmm. i also got to decide what mode of transportation we taking bus we taking a cab plane cruise so you go through this process then you get on the trip well we may leave a lot of x amount of dollars for some excursions some dinners some whatever it is mm -hmm. and so you go on the vacation you have a great time mm -hmm. i need some of that same energy that was applied to taking a vacation take some of that and let's right. put it over here with your financial game. And, and of course, I, I know planning for your finances are, it's not as fun. It's not fun for most people to plan out their financial lives as opposed to mm -hmm. going on vacation. Mm -hmm. And so having that plan serves as your guide. And I'll say this too, having the plan is useful because now we have something to check up on. Because if you don't have a plan, you just out here throwing darts. You're hoping- right. Some sticks, you get all these puzzle pieces, but none of the pieces are connecting. So the plan honestly bling, brings you clarity. Okay. And we need clarity because if you don't have clarity, you're not going to even know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, you're going to end up anywhere, which probably won't be financial freedom. That's for one thing. And look, I, I told somebody one time, I said, look, I'm like your financial navigator. I'm going to sit in the car and do my best to say left, right, go straight, go around here. Let's take this detour. Mm -hmm. Now, if you... You in the driver's seat. So if you driving and you don't want to listen to me, you want to go off and by all means do what you do. The, I, I try to serve as this resource for people to, I, I want to help you, but mm -hmm. I, I cannot do the work for you. But right. I know I, I can guarantee you this. If you get a financial plan in place, whether it's a simple plan, a complex plan, it does not matter. Just doing the work of going through that right. activity, you will alleviate so much stress in your life. Oh. That is the only thing I can guarantee. I can't guarantee investment returns. I don't know what day you're going to die. I don't know what day you're going to get fired, get hired, have a kid, move. That kind of stuff, that's just life. Yeah. I can't plan for that. I, I can acknowledge that stuff is going to happen. But if I got this game plan with my money, okay, now when life does happen, and it will, I have something to reference. That's right. Something Most people fun. have nothing. So- you lose your job. Well, what do I do? There's a short list of things I always tell all my clients. And I'm like, lose a job. That's a life-changing event. Take a look at all your money. If you get married, if you have, get divorced, if you have a mm -hmm. child, just when you have these life-altering moments, that is the best time to review your plan. Whatever your plan looks like is going to be unique and specific to your situation. So my plan may be a little more robust because I got five kids and you know all this stuff. You may say, I'm a single person and say, well, Bray, I, it's just me. But it doesn't matter. Your plan fits Teresa. My plan fits Jasper. That's what you right. got to have. Like, I'm not looking at Teresa saying, Teresa, what should I do? you like, Jasper, I don't have five kids. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. have, I didn't get divorced. Like, I think there are elements of a financial plan that will apply to everybody, whether you black, brown, green, yellow. Wow. There are just certain things you should do if you want financial freedom, financial independence. If you don't want that, then don't do a plan. Keep Keep going at it haphazardly and let me know how the results turn out. That's all well, I want to know. It won't turn out pretty good. And so earlier in our conversation, you mentioned that like some neighborhoods, some firms, if you don't have a certain amount of money, they don't want to talk to you. So do you have any recommendations on how someone who may not have that $250,000 network to get started with a financial advisor? Is that even possible? It is De definitely in today's time. So back in the day, that wasn't, I mean, and I had some, some of my mentors were, they are financial advisors and they were like, the person didn't have 250, couldn't even talk to them. They would say, this could be a short meeting. See you later. <laughs> see you. 
And, and, and so we would walk out like that, but but that stigma still sticks to this day mm-hmm. where people will say, Well, Jasper, I don't think I can afford you. And I'm like, you don't even know what I offer. But the stigma, because and it's around the titles, titles. A title signified to certain communities that I can or I cannot afford to even engage with. So even to right. this day, I, well, Jasper, how much does it cost? Well, it's going to depend. I mm-hmm. have certain things that I have minimums on, but I also do a lot of consulting through the Build Wealth Movement. And that's that's partly why I launched my own business so I could service those people who well, I don't have a lot, enough investable assets. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. What can we do? What can we do with what you got so I can help you? Because I I cannot work for free. But if you Mm -hmm. want free or you need something a little more affordable, YouTube University exists. (laughs) It is not an accredited institution. You will find anything and everything you need. I mean, I've learned so much on their like how to videos where if you are a do it yourself or it all it it lends you that opportunity to go through the process. Because some people like getting dirty. Some people like Mm -hmm. getting into the weeds. Other mm-hmm. people, hey, man, just tell me what to do. I'll pay somebody to get it done. So you can find what you want. But I think for you, you've got to be willing to make some investment. Right. Some, whether that's your time or your money, make the investment. Mm-hmm. And the investment is small. Just know you can't get everything for the low. And, and let me say this too. When somebody's given a discount, take advantage of the discount. Oh, I love discounts. <laughs> I do too. Well, you know, pe- and, and people... People always think, you know, when they see a sale that the business owner is up to something, they are. They are a business. They're trying to make money. You would do the same thing. So I think be be mindful that if you're willing to make an investment of some degree, you can get the support you need. You will not get all of it. And honestly, the more you pay, the more you will get. So if you make a small investment, don't don't assume that practitioner is going to give you a lot for that small amount of money. Uh-huh. Now, if you pay, look, I got I have a, uh, we'll call it the, the platinum package. If you're in the platinum category, <laughs> you can call me all the time. You can text me, you can call, like, you get more access. Right, right. But I, I think we have this dilemma of we we all have to make this, Um, I, t- I tell my clients about this, we all have this investment decision tree or uh, this, mm-hmm. you all have to make this decision. It's mm-hmm. what am I willing to pay for the time, the risk, the fees, performance, like all of that is included in helping us to make a decision. And mm-hmm. so we as individuals have to decide if I'm not willing to pay, then I'm going I'm to have to spend a lot of my time mm-hmm. learning this on my own and I still might not get it right. That's right. That's the problem. Or flip side, I can still make an investment and pay for somebody and it still might not work out. And I think it's that that dilemma of it's never mm-hmm. going to be perfect, but we're not looking for perfection. I'm looking to help you put the pieces together and mm-hmm. it may require you making some investments. It may require you doing some of your own work or combination. Mm-hmm. So I always tell me, you can work with me, you can do it yourself, or you can do a combination. And then I shut up and let them tell me how they want to engage with me. That's it. But okay. you have to decide. You as the individual have to decide, do I want to pay somebody? If not, then I got to spend a lot of time doing this on my own. And, I'm, and I, I hope if you're doing it on your own, how are you measuring your success? That's the question. That's right. They need to be able to measure it. And then, but how do you address someone? They are so fearful about investing because being in fear and investing will make, look, it equal broke when you retire. I, <laughs> so I generally, will, so if, if I'm in, in, if I'm faced with that question, well, I don't want to take risk. I'm afraid of losing. I'll ask somebody to share with me a story where they took a chance in their life. Was Mm -hmm. there a young man or a young lady you were trying to go out with? Mm -hmm. Did you shoot your shot or not? (laughs) Did you try to attract said person? That's risk. Mm -hmm. Here's what I can guarantee. If you don't shoot your shot, guarantees you will not go out on a date and you will not marry that person. Guarantee. That's right. right. So I always try. I try my best to, to get people to don't think about it in the sense of money. Think about your life. You take risk every day. You go outside and get in your car. There's a chance the driver beside you don't know how to drive. That's risk. But yeah, mm-hmm. we go outside and drive every day. Every we get on the day. butt. Like there, there's 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 risk in everything that we do, mm-hmm. and yet we have told ourselves that I have to get past this to go live. Ooh. So financially. I can guarantee you, if you're not willing to take some risks with your money, guaranteed you won't have a lot of it ever in your life. 
ever, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -mm. You can't, you can't save enough. You can't work yeah. enough hours. You have to invest because you need your money working for you. If you can't work or if you're not willing to work, that's the right. fun part about investing is that you put some money up and you just sit back and let it work. Yes. Why are you sleeping? Let it work. So when you retire, you don't have to go say welcome to Walmart. That's right. Yeah. Unless, you know, unless, you know what, you know what, Teresa? No, let me take it back. Unless that's what you want to do in your retired life is be a greeter. You go a right broke ahead. greeter. <laughs> yeah. I'm a greet. I want to have some money. I want to do it because I want to get out of the house. I ain't trying to do it because I got to do it. And so unless you want to do it, then fine. But no, I don't want to be no greeter unless I'm just there for looks. I'm with you. So I'm, but you, you just said the key thing that I tell people retire when you if you want to work work in retirement you just said do it because you want to do it right that's it like like one yeah. of the, so I, I give it the perfect example is not the walmart greeter it's uh at, at, at sporting events the the ticket people who are at like in, in the stadium or the arena they're like let me check your ticket yeah. they get to watch free sports every night in that city like, that's a retirement job when you're on your feet for a long time but you what? out with people and you get to watch sports every time they have a home game. Yeah. That is a fun. Yeah. So one one of my one of my one of my old heads, he does a part time. I'm here in Oakland. He he is at he works at the Oakland A's. And I saw him at a game. I was like, what are you doing? He was like, I love baseball. And this is how I get to watch all these games. <laughs> and he can get a go up to the front wherever he wants to. He can get a good seat. He ain't working hard. All he's doing is checking tickets and got, hey, your seats are here. Where are you sitting? But he was like, I get to watch baseball all year long. That Like, that's a fun, it was part-time. He was uh -huh. like, I do this. But you get to meet a lot of, he still got a business. He was like, I meet people. Yeah. Because they always like, am I working because I need to? He was like, nah, I got money. It's just, I like coming to the game. Right. Kids are grown. Wife is yeah. like, don't be at the house all day with me. He was like, I needed something to do to get out of my right. wife's way. And uh -huh. I get to watch baseball and I, I make a few dollars. <laughs> you can't beat that. See, now that's a good retirement because, see, I would be at the Broadway house. Let me check the ticket. Soon as the <laughs> show starts, I'm up at the front. Oh, y'all better find your seat. So, see, that would be a good retirement because it's by choice. You don't need the paycheck. They yep. paying you to do something that you want to do. Yeah. So I call that a good retirement. Yeah. And so, Jasper, yeah. with this generation of poverty, in my mind, which you may know, no, you know more than me because you're licensed. In order to, one way to break this generational poverty is people need to start living by a budget. Can you give some ideas or pointers on what you recommend to how, how someone can start living within a budget? Because in order for them to break generational poverty, which is what we're talking about, they are going to have to get on a budget. So let's talk a little bit about budgeting. Yeah, I'm glad you brought this up. So you have to find the budgeting strategy that works for you. Okay, let's talk That's about Yep, that could be an app. That could okay. be pen and paper. That could be, you know, uh, your, your bank of credit union has an online mm -hmm. system. I mean, there, there's an uh, Excel. Excel has a ton mm -hmm. of, of budgeting templates, excuse me, of budgeting mm -hmm. templates. So I, I think for people to, one, you got to be willing to try a couple different strategies to see which one serves you best. But once you get a firm understanding of how you spend in terms of your money habits, Mm -hmm. my best clients don't stick to the budget. I know they don't. So they go through the budgeting activity. We go mm -hmm. through an app. We do some work, but once mm -hmm. you get, it takes a couple of months. Once you mm -hmm. have an idea of where you are financially, sticking to the budget tends to not be as important because now you've got the momentum built and the habit built of I'm mm -hmm. aware. A budget mm -hmm. brings about awareness. What's coming in? And what's going out? When you have that awareness, you don't necessarily need to be focused and locked in every month on the budget because now you are aware of what needs to happen. So it's almost like second nature where it's like, I don't need to check every month or maybe you still do as a as a good habit. But mm -hmm. some people feel like budgeting cuts stuff out of their lives. Oh, yeah. And that's partially true. And I say mm -hmm. partially because I want you to think about cutting some things out of your life temporarily right so temporarily stop spending so much money every weekend sit your butt at the house watch a movie <laughs> at the house go grocery shopping a little more so you're not ordering ordering out or delivering like do a little bit more and, you know do a little be a little bit more engaged in this process mm -hmm. 
and just stop letting these dollars walk out your pocket, funding somebody else's retirement and dreams and paying for their mortgages when you got bills. And so what it does, I, I love the budget because it brings about the awareness. And, and again, I've tried a lot of different budgeting strategies. I'm only mm -hmm. a fan of whatever budgeting strategy is going to help my client out. That's mm -hmm. it. I, I, I literally don't recommend apps because people don't use them. An uh, app mm -hmm. can't talk like we're talking right now. So right. an app app is going to have just generated, oh, you did good this month, Teresa. All right, Teresa, you a little 10% over, Teresa. Hey, Teresa, just so you know, you went, you paid <laughs> a little bit more for food this month, Teresa. Uh -huh. But you're not, you're not digging deeper. Yo, Teresa, why you keep going out every Friday night? Explain that to me. That's what <laughs> an app that's what an app can't do. So I, I think as much as I love technology mm -hmm. and I've embraced it as a compliment to my client, like it's complimentary to what I do. I need to leverage technology. You know, technology can always be available, but Jasper's not going to always be here. So Jasper, right. to, I need to partner with you and whatever apps you're leveraging, or even when people have other advisors they work with, how are all of us helping to serve you? Like, it's you. The budget is just one tool that if okay. we got more comfortable with it, we'd be a little bit better off because this is only that's just oh. one tool. Right. But okay. but again, we got to find the budgeting strategy or tool that works for us. And the second thing I'll say is give yourself a whole lot of grace. It's not Definitely. fun. It's not easy. But having that awareness of how you spend your money goes a long way with helping you to disrupt generational poverty. Oh, I like that. And so now. Because we're talking about generational poverty. We got some listeners like, oh my gosh, they are talking about me. Now you have discussed the budget and they have implemented a budget and Jasper, they're not having enough money to do what they need to do. Can yeah. you give some recommendations for some passive income so that they can get this budget up, get this debt yeah. down? start planning for their financial future yeah so so before i hit the passive part so if you in, if you're in that situation where you have more month than money that's that's mm -hmm. the phrase like you got way more month than money coming in yeah. we've got to think about are there if possible are there any parts of your budget that you can scale back the biggest mm -hmm. culprit is all these subscription services you better cut some of them out you don't need them all that's you right. like you get the bundle package that gets all of them. Don't keep buying them separately. Right. So so small tweaks will mm -hmm. free up a few more dollars. Um, with the investment piece, again, if I have some, let's say some discretionary funds to mm -hmm. I need something to play with, real estate is always an option. It is a little more cash intensive if you're going the physical real estate route. But a lot mm -hmm. of people don't know this, Teresa. So you can own real estate through the stock market. There are securities. Mm -hmm. that offer up some of the benefits of real estate that don't require a credit check or you having to get a down payment. So that's another whole conversation. But if anybody's interested, if you're like, what was he talking about? Hit me up and I will explain to you what a real estate investment trust is. Okay. I'll leave it at that. That's a passive option. Um, look okay. at supporting a local small business of some sort or capacity where if you have a friend who's launching a business, maybe you're providing uh, some investment dollars to support their marketing efforts. And as mm -hmm. a as a uh, as a part of your contract or deal with this person, mm -hmm. I would like a small revenue share based on the efforts that I'm putting in. So if I were to say uh, doing a marketing campaign for you, Teresa, and you're mm -hmm. like, well, Jasper. Uh, I need some help with marketing. I may say, you know what? I'll invest some of my time and money into marketing your business, Teresa, but I would love a revenue share of maybe 2% on any sales that happen as a result of the work that I put in. That's passive. Mm -hmm. I put in right. the work, I gave it to you, but if you get some new clients or new customers, I yep. I am entitled to 2%. Now, so, so, so what you got to do is get real creative on maybe investing in some small businesses. That's another mm -hmm. passive way where you they're doing all the work. You just put up a little money. Maybe you're supporting them with some of your talents. And mm -hmm. now you got a little kickback. Um, the other one is just having an investment account. So stocks, there are stocks that pay dividends. So you okay. can just have an investment portfolio of dividend paying stocks. And over time, that could be, that could or will produce passive income. Okay. Now, All right. You need to be making investments consistently and buying up more shares. But as you own mm -hmm. more shares, the size of that dividend will increase. So right. I think for passive income, people think, well, I'm going to get the income right away. And you may, but mm -hmm. it still requires a little bit of active work 
to get the passive income. That's that. I think that's where the disconnect happens. Right. That we hear passive. Well, I can just wake <laughs> up and walk to my mailbox or check my account. Right. But you still got to okay. do some work up front mm -hmm. to set mm -hmm. up the passive structure. So it could be business. It could be real estate, whether physical mm -hmm. or within the markets. It could be a dividend, um, dividend stocks that could pay out or exchange traded funds or ETFs. Or it could be you getting creative and investing in businesses that have products and services where you're like, hey, I'll help you. But in exchange, I would like a percentage of your revenue based on the efforts that I'm putting up. And those right. are creative ways that you ain't got to quit your job. You know, uh, you can stay doing what you do, but provide right. some support. It's like mm -hmm. um, it's like referral programs. Teresa, for every referral you send me, if I get if they sign up for my service, I'm going to get you twenty five dollars. Right. That's passive. Passive. You need to know, but I sent you my friend and my mm -hmm. friend signed up. You getting that 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 referral fee. So we got to get creative. I, I think we mm -hmm. you can keep working multiple jobs. I'm not into that. I don't have that kind of time. Mm -hmm. I got to figure out how do I maximize my day because I can't work for so many hours. I got a family. I'm trying to have some fun. I can't work all the time. So I yeah. have to. I have to or I should seriously consider investing in something. Yes. That will allow me to earn money that I'm not working. That is so good. Now, before I let you go, we have talked about the generational poverty. I just want you to give some, you know, like end us with some words of wisdom for people who may be in, you know, the poverty, generational poverty, but they need here's, to figure out how to get out. So just so give then, us some wisdom that I know you got stored right here. Yeah, here's, here's what I'll say to anybody and everybody who's listening. It is real short. Work hard until expensive becomes cheap. That is deep. I, I'm going to say it again. Work hard until expensive becomes cheap. That's that my might, advice. Wow. Yeah, and that might take a while. But if they get focused on that, it That's could right. change the trajectory. Of it will. It, Teresa, it, it, you are guaranteed to change. There's something right now you're like, man, I wish I could afford it. What if you could? Start working. And again, I, I, I try to be as broad as I can with some of these things because each person, you just might not be ready for this. And that's OK. So I, I it's it's easy for me to personalize my advice when I'm talking mm -hmm. one on one and you share mm -hmm. some more information. But for, mm -hmm. for ge generally speaking, if I keep working hard at whatever I'm doing, investing, working, saving at some point, there's some things in my life that I, I might have said, man, I could never do that. Once you get to that level, that means you did the work that was required, whatever that work might have been. That could have been working with me, working with somebody like me, doing it yourself, taking a class. You know, you mm -hmm. got to do some work. Look, unless you just going to receive that inheritance or win the lottery, you know, oh, that's different. But that's not right. going to be our re that's not going to be most people's reality. Mm -hmm. Not not that's yet. Not but yet. part of disrupting generational poverty to me. I always say this too. I'm doing the work that I do right now because I want my kids, kids, kids to live a life of privilege. Yeah. And I say that where I have a daughter right now, but I think, you know, there's going to be some little kid who is, you know, going to be born a hundred years from now. And they're going to be like, man, Uncle Jasper was it. That, that dude left us. Yeah. That's how you got to think. When you think about generational wealth, when you think about leaving a legacy. You, you've got to disrupt this way of thinking that we have right now. It's going to require you to get out your comfort zone. But think about years from now, when these people in your family are talking about you, is it going to be a good report? Oh, yes. And we want a good report. And like on that note, I need you to tell the listeners yeah. how they can find you. Yeah, I always send people to my website. It's thebuildwealthmovement.com. That's where you can find all my stuff, my, my blog articles, my merch store. I got some videos. I just, that's where you can find me. I have a book on there. Like you just are curious about what I talk about. <laughs> like that's, that's how I talk to my clients. Like, and I, I think when people go again, the, the billwealthmovement.com and just mm -hmm. read some of the articles that I've written because I wrote them in a manner that it should be fairly simple or easy to digest. And mm -hmm. if not, you can still reach out to me and we can chop it up. Like I want to talk to more people to figure out what's stopping you from being financially great. And, and if you can be honest with me, if you can be honest, I, I promise you, I will be just as honest. And I will tell you if I can help or if I need to get you to another resource that can help you, no matter where you are on your financial planning, or as I call it, your build wealth journey, 
I know I can add some value to wherever you are on your journey. Okay. I, so know now, I, can. I believe you can. So if you, if someone wants to make an appointment with you, do they just go to that website to make the I appointment? Do. Yeah, there's a contact us section down there. A lot of people won't fill it out, but if they do, I'm gonna hit you back, and we're gonna schedule. We're gonna schedule a strategy session. We, that that is, I will reach back out, and we will get this strategy session down. And I don't make any guarantees, Teresa. I, I can only do right. but so much based on what somebody shares with me, and I right. try to be as transparent about here's what I can do. Here are my mm -hmm. offerings, but it's really about where do you see me fitting in. Mm -hmm. Because again, ultimately it's your decision. You are in the driver's seat. So you tell me, hey, Jasper, I need X. I can help you with that. If it's Jasper, I need Y. I can't help you with that. But here's another resource. Like I'm always going to be giving you a resource. If mm -hmm. I don't know, just know I know somebody in my network. Or if I don't know have anybody in my network, we're going to find a resource for you together. Right. That's what we need. Well, Jasper, Mr. Smith, thank you <laughs> so much for spending time with us today. I am sure that you captivated our listeners and I'm hoping that someone is smart enough to reach out to you so that they can break this generational poverty mindset that might be affecting their lives. And so again, from the Money Talk, we thank you so much. And listeners, if you enjoyed our content, please like, share, and subscribe. And please reach out to Mr. Jasper Smith. We will be providing his website in the show notes. Reach out to him so that he can help you have a better financial future. Thanks again for watching.